To briefly discuss how to complete this paper, let's go back to the third and most important step in the argumentation process, your position. As I mentioned earlier, what's most important is that your voice guides the argument. Here, you made some claims that follow a natural progression. They are, one, that the debate over slavery was more than just a humanistic and moralistic debate. Two, that slavery was a major economic factor, especially in the southern states. And three, that slavery was also a crucial determinant of political power. I point out what I call a natural progression because these elements of your argument are presented in a way that is designed to disagree with Writer X's meaning. There are many different ways to use these elements, but one tried and true method is to speak to each element in the order you originally presented it. By doing this, you create a more convincing argument because your reader encounters the development of your thinking along a line that you've already given them in your original statement or thesis. Remember, Writer X said that the American Civil War was caused by the moral and humanistic debate over slavery. And you explained that while the moral and humanistic debate was clearly significant, X's assertion implies that the debate over slavery was not economic or political. To set yourself up to say that, the debate over slavery was more than just a humanistic and moralistic debate. Slavery represented a major economic factor in the young American nation, especially in the southern states. It was also a crucial determinant of political power, as representation in the House of Representatives was directly influenced by the size of the slave population in each state. Essentially, you and Writer X agree that slavery was one of the primary causes of the American Civil War. But in your view, slavery was also an economic and political issue, and in Writer X's view, slavery was just a humanistic and moralistic issue. To prove your point, all you need to do is to support the three claims which you already outlined in your original position. Note that the first claim draws a clear distinction between your position and Writer X's, and the second and third claims directly identify slavery as an economic and political issue. Now, just explain each claim and support it with evidence. This evidence should come from other sources or voices, either critical voices or, even better, directly from historical evidence. As with your core argument or thesis, your thinking should drive your writing, but as with your original argument, using other voices to support your thinking is the best way to write. For example, in support of your second claim, you could cite information about how slave labor was a significant factor in the agricultural production of the pre-war South. Or in support of your third claim, you could point out that the three-fifths compromise in the Constitution directly related the size of a state's slave population to its political power in Congress. Both of these examples support your assertions that slavery was an economic and political issue, and thus suggest that it was far more than simply a moral and humanistic issue. In this way, you prove your original argument, and you do so relative to Writer X's different interpretation of the same topic. What's even better is that now you have drawn on two new and different sources, or voices, to support your claim. Finally, to wrap it all together, you simply need to make one final move. Now that you have successfully argued that slavery was indeed an economic and political issue, you can return to Writer X's original position and use that to close the loop. Remember that you identified that Writer X said the American Civil War was caused by moral and humanistic debate over slavery. You have spent considerable time proving how slavery was indeed an economic and political factor. Now the final piece of your conclusion is just waiting to be stated. That is, slavery was undoubtedly a central piece of the economic and political conflict that caused the American Civil War. And that's it. It's simple enough. If you're able to identify another voice in the conversation, you can use it to define your own. I'll return to my hypothetical example one more time to point out a few final elements to consider. First, I'd like to point out that this paper argues two things, not just one. First, it argues that slavery was an economic and political issue, not just a humanistic and moralistic one. And second, upon condition of the first, it argues that slavery was part of the primary cause for the American Civil War. These ideas are tightly related. Maintaining a tight focus in your argument or arguments will allow you to keep focused as your paper progresses. If you're less experienced with academic writing or have less command of the material, or if you simply mean to write the best possible essay, Arguing in support of a clearly articulated position will help ensure the reader that the reader follows your thinking and help you stay focused. Here, I should offer a word of caution. As an academic writer, the merits of your thinking are judged almost exclusively on the merits of what you write. 
You may be very passionate about an issue, but passion does not stand in for persuasion. Argumentation in academic writing is a bit of a balancing act between making your case and considering the arguments of others. And remember, your position will always be stronger if you can demonstrate to your reader why it is so with clear, well-articulated examples. Happy writing!